Hey friends, welcome back. I am Jason Salyer and I get asked about snakes all the time. So let's go ahead and address those. I've got a copperhead right here behind me. Um, I'll let you see him real quick. Let's see. There he is. So there's a copperhead right there. Let me zoom in a little bit because I don't want to get too close to him. I'm probably two feet away right now. But there he is. They are beautiful and creepy all at the same time. So copperheads like this one are amazing. Their camouflage is perfect. If they're in the leaf litter sitting on the ground, man, they are invisible. It's pretty amazing. Um, just the senses that they have. To, they're, they're basically a pit viper and they can sense heat. And, and even in pitch blackness, they can't see a single thing. They can find their targets and strike them. And they have a hematoxic venom, which basically means that it kills the red blood cells. Um, and it's a pretty nasty way for a rodent to go, I would, I would imagine. But for humans, they're really not that dangerous. They're not that aggressive of a snake. Um, and typically they will deliver, well, not typically, but a lot of times they'll deliver what's called a dry bite. If you would happen to, they, they don't want anything to do with you. They want you to leave them alone, and I want I want to leave them alone as well. But if you should happen to step on one, it might do what's called a defensive bite. But typically it's dry because the snake doesn't want to waste its venom on something it's just using for self-defense. It, it wants to use save that venom for its prey. So it might get you, but it's going to deliver a small dose or if, if nothing at all. Um, but they like to hang out in these rocky outcroppings kind of like this because these rocks have a, th a large thermal mass and they're going to retain their warmth throughout the night. Um, but it's also... It's like a cave, you know, it's much, much cooler back in there during the hottest part of the day. And that's why they like to hang out in spots just like that. Um, but you can see how easy it would be if I was kind of just climbing up these rocks right here. If I could stick my hand in there or whatever and accidentally touch him, he probably wouldn't like that. May not bite me, but then again, then again, he might. Um, so I get questions about this all the time. What do you do about snakes? Well, one, avoid them. Know where they live. Um, I don't know this to be a fact, but in my personal experience, um, just just speaking from personal experience, I see them on southward facing slopes a lot more. Um, and anytime there's rocky outcroppings like this, they're going to be more prevalent. Um, I where I tip if I was going to look for a snake, that's where I'd look for one. Um, uh, if you're and just keeping a constant uh, awareness of them, always looking where you're putting your feet, always looking where you're putting your hands, never just blindly walking through something that you can't see. Don't stick your hands in holes like that that you can't see inside. Um, tall boots, a good idea. If you're in real snaky areas, thick leather, rubber boots, things like that, snake chaps, all that stuff is a good idea. And I'm not going to discourage you from wearing them. Do I wear those? Um, no, I, I have worn snake chaps before, but that is when I was actively hunting rattlesnakes. So that's a totally different scenario. I was looking for a trouble. But um, so what What would happen if this copperhead bit you? Copperheads aren't aren't the worst. What's going to happen is several symptoms. Well, if, if it delivers any venom to you. If it's a dry bite, probably nothing's going to happen other than just a little bit of pain from the initial bite. But um, if it does get you, you're going to get some some redness, some some swelling, probably some bruising around the bite. And the venom, since it is a hematoxin, it's going to cause some bruising and more swelling and it's going to spread around that bite area. Um, it can cause dizziness. It can cause nausea. Uh, you can pass out. It can it cause your heart rate to speed up cause your blood pressure to drop, which has been known to cause people to pass out to faint. Um, so that's one issue. If you do get bit by one of these guys, um, driving yourself to the hospital is kind of a bad idea unless that's your only option. Because if you were to pass out behind the wheel, obviously then you're going to have even more problems. <clears throat> Almost zero deaths from copperhead bites. Very, very, very few. If you're uh, elderly, if you're an infant, um, Maybe, um, but chances are, if you're a healthy adult, you're not gonna you're not gonna die from a copperhead. You might have some physical scarring, some damage because it will damage the tissue around the bite. But the faster you can get to medical help and get some antivenom, the better off you're going to be, and it will reduce the 
the um, chances of you having long-term issues. If you do get bit by a copperhead, don't wait for the signs and symptoms of the bite to start start happening. Just go ahead and go. It may be a dry bite, but just go ahead and go to the hospital just in case so you, they can have the antivenom on ready. Call ahead and let them know what kind of snake bit you. Take a picture of it just in case you're not sure. Um, if you're not sure it's a venomous snake, it might be a harmless water snake or something, but you're not sure, just go ahead and go just, just to be... Um, just to be on the safe side. But know your snakes, know what they look like. Copperheads have a really, I mean, it's not hard to tell the difference between a copperhead and, and a non-venomous type snake that has similar markings. They've got that diamond-shaped spear-type head with those big jowls uh, where their venom glands are. Their eyes are that coppery, gold, creepy color. Um, and they don't screw around, man. They just have this this kind of don't mess with me look about them. If you do get bit on your hand or your fingers or anything like that and you've got a ring on, make sure you take that thing off immediately because it's going to swell up. And if it swells up with a ring on, you might lose that finger. That's that's a real deal. So make sure you get that thing off. Um, that's why I don't wear a ring on my finger normally. I don't have it on today for some reason. I took it off for some reason. But um, I normally wear my wedding ring around my neck on a piece of paracord, which some people frown upon too because they think that I'm going to get, you know, strangled hung in the woods somehow because they know of so many people that that that's that's happened to <laughs> but so also if you should happen to get bit um wash it immediately with soap soapy water some cool soapy water don't soak it in ice water or anything like that don't to attempt to slice open the the bite um don't try to suck out the venom don't do any of that stuff um Chances are, e even if you did nothing to the bite itself, you're going to be okay. You might get some scarring, but it, you're not going to die. Um, but don't do any of those remedies that you might have seen on TV. Just just get to the hospital as quickly as you can. So moving through the woods like this is where you have to be cautious. Because, like I said, those, those um, copperheads, they blend into the leaf litter amazingly well. I mean, they'll just be sitting there right next to you and you'll never know it. They won't bother you if you don't step on them, <laughs> basically. But another thing to think about or um, just to be aware of is your, your tactics when moving through the woods. So for example, I come across this log right here, right? Um, I could step over it and put my foot down right next to it. But what would happen is there could potentially be a snake right there waiting for me to step on it and bite it. So always, just as a general rule, step on top of the log. Be careful because they're slippery sometimes, but step on top of the log and then give yourself a good couple feet of uh, distance between you and whatever that object is because they will hang out under things like that because again, during the hot part of the day, they're seeking out the shade. They're going to be most active at night. They're going to be out and about at night, um, the early part of the evening, probably. Not when it's the coolest, like just before dawn kind of deal, but the early evening um, as the sun goes away and it's the perfect temperature for them to be the most active and they're going to be out hunting. Um, they're typically ambush predators, so they'll just kind of lie and wait for some critter to come by and then give them the juice. Um, but anyway, keep a lookout for them, guys. Leave them alone. Um, Growing up my whole life, I, uh, if there was a snake of any kind seen on my property, it was a dead snake. Um, and I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that philosophy. I typically leave them alone. Um, now, I guess if a, a venomous snake is right next to the house, I, I would attempt to relocate it or dispatch it. Um, but that's, that's kind of your call. You could always call somebody in to remove it for you, but... You know, we like to take care of things ourselves. Most of you probably watching this video are the same way. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already. See you on the next video. Leave us a comment. Today's comment is, what would we name that snake? I feel like he's a Theodore. Definitely a Theodore.